Medical students learn how to manage and treat disease, but once they start meeting patients in clinics and hospitals, they are also confronted with the fact that social factors have a huge impact on health and that their medical interventions might sometimes be limited. Medical residents Laura Stymist and Lita Cameron and medical student Chris Harper explain how they hope to shape their medical practice to enact change and ensure their patients live better, healthier lives. Chris Harper tells how he has seen firsthand how doctors can't always fix what is making their patients sick. What's kind of surprised me about is sometimes when you're in the clinic or the in the patient's room with a doctor, you really see the limitations of how far medical care can go. So I see when a doctor is able to diagnose a certain issue and maybe create a plan for its management, but maybe if that patient isn't able to, to afford the treatment that they need, or maybe they don't have the social support to do that, the physician's care isn't, isn't really going to go anywhere. When you're meeting patients, you're realizing that most of what is causing a healthcare problem or a disease is not what's happening in the hospital or the clinic. So I think the biggest challenge for me is that knowledge that as a physician, I can only do so much. These limitations are not discouraging future physicians. Rather, they have been encouraged to think of ways to change the way medicine is being practiced, says Lita Cameron. There definitely is this sincere desire to understand health beyond illness. And I think it definitely feels like there is a shift to try to understand and apply these understandings, I guess, to our clinical practice, recognizing that we're also faced with a lot of other demands on our time that may limit the ideal that we'd like to have in terms of how we apply it in our day-to-day -day practice, I think, is something that as residents we're all striving to understand. This is why young doctors need to become great at interviewing their patients, says Chris Harper. I had a professor talk about the importance of maintaining the traditional, taking a really good history and doing a really good physical exam of the patient. So, I mean, it, it's really a skill in itself to be able to interview a patient well and to use that interview to gain as much information as possible or maybe motivate positive health behaviors in the future. Being a good interviewer will therefore make it easier for physicians to ask their patients about their social conditions, even if it could be a difficult topic to approach, says Lita Cameron. So we have to also take away kind of the stigma of asking, do you have a home? Where are you going to go when you're discharged from hospital? What are you going to eat? Like these are like very basic, important questions. But how do we ask it in a very natural way, in a not judgmental way? I think is something that we'll probably all make lots of mistakes. But hopefully with lots of practice, patients will see that we're sincerely just trying to be of service. Including questions about a person's social situation during a medical intervention is also making residents think in terms of prevention, not just treatment, as Laura Stymus. Something I think we don't do often enough is screen for issues that aren't necessarily the uh, typical thinking around an illness like screening for poverty. I think we need to be asking those questions and proactively trying to make change to prevent healthcare problems. And I think prevention seems so intuitive when you talk about it, but it's really not how our system works. And I think it requires a real overhaul and change in political thinking and will to fix it. And I think it would make a huge impact in, in the stability of our healthcare system. She hopes that more resources will be available for physicians to practice social medicine. If the healthcare system was able to support physicians in taking that time, whether it be through offering billing options for prevention or other measures to encourage physicians to do that type of screening, I think that would help facilitate it. There's only so many hours in the day, so it does, I think, take that extra little bit of effort and it takes the right tools where physicians could pull out a resource at the bedside or have a number to call, like 211 is a program that's where you can seek out what community resources are available, where there are mechanisms to do it. I think physicians would be more encouraged and, and more likely to do that collaborating. Chris Harper explains why he hopes to give a voice to his patients and help them with issues that are not traditionally seen as medical components of health care. I think that it will definitely be an important part of my practice in the future, whether that's advocating for better social support or really getting to know my patient's family or something. That'll be definitely an important part because physicians, they have that perspective of interacting directly with the patient and seeing how policies affect those patients. And so their perspective is really valuable in setting the tone and the direction for 
for resource allocation. Lita Cameron adds that physicians should be involved in advocating for their patients. I feel like medicine without advocacy is, is very difficult to fathom. Because I think when we say advocacy, we can we see lots of different things. So is it advocate on a patient's behalf for accessing medicines that they aren't able to afford? Are we advocating on behalf of parents being able to put their children in a free daycare over the summer because they're single parents? And I think that if we're expecting to help a patient to address their health needs, we also need to be looking at the social determinants. And, and if we're thinking about social determinants, we have to be thinking about advocacy. We all have an ideal clinic that we'd love to create, but we have to be realistic and work within a system, recognizing that people are contributing in very many ways and how do we kind of collaborate together to address a lot of unmet needs. For Evidence Network, I'm Melanie Holoboski.